We can also look at the ways in which moving things online left certain populations out, um, marginalized some people, and not every, we know, we now know that there are big populations of folks in the U.S. that do not have access to the internet for whatever reason. And we take it for granted when we're tech rich like me. I'm tech rich. I got all, all the things, <laughs> right? My, my, my household is full of tech. Some people, it is completely the opposite. On my team, we spend a lot of time thinking about this concept of the digital divide. And that's the idea that there's a whole group of students who have a long history of access to high quality technology. So they have the hardware and software they need, they have access to high quality Wi-Fi, but also that background knowledge or those parallel skills for how to use that technology um, in effective ways. And there are a whole group of other students who do not have that knowledge, that access, um, and it creates this divide between students who are able to jump into an online class with all of the resources they need to succeed and hit the ground running, and other students who are going to spend an immense amount of energy, um, money, labor, time, cognitive load, tracking down the right hardware, the right software, the right access to Wi-Fi, and have to teach themselves those skills. From a technological standpoint, it's much more difficult, um, especially if you don't have a wide range of devices. I'm lucky enough to have a laptop and an iPad, but I know plenty of my friends that only have the iPad given by the university, and even then the university's not giving that iPad out in the next year, I believe. As digital flagship has evolved, it's being referred to now as the Buckeye Technology Equity Commitment is the, the name of it. And it includes four services. Uh, one is, Ado is the Adobe Creative Suite licensing. Um, another is virtual desktop infrastructure. Virtual desktop infrastructure gives basically any student with a device that can connect to the internet can access high computing power. That's really important when it comes to like, let's say a student has a, a tech, has a laptop that's five years old um, and doesn't, or doesn't have a, like a really robust hard drive. Like there, that access to that computing power can make a lot of difference and allow them to have a device that is maybe a little less powerful um, hardware because they can connect into this software. The other piece is the student technology loan program that currently loans uh, either an iPad Air or a Microsoft Surface Go to students who are eligible. The primary focus of that program going forward is um, for students who have a technology access issue, insecurity. They don't have access to the technology that they need to be successful. Um, and then lastly is, is digital skills. So it's knowing that not every student is coming into the institution with skills uh, to know how to use their technology academically. When we are designing classes with instructors, we're always keeping an eye out for ways to identify students who need help getting access to technology. Um, and there are a lot of resources at Ohio State that are available to students. Yeah, online coursework uh, can also be improved increasing the accessibility of it. So there's a lot of students that have very various needs for captioning, uh, have needs for additional materials in different formats. Um, and that can take a lot of time for an instructor to make, but we definitely need, need to push more and more for that. If a student needs a certain file, it's there, or they need a download of the lecture, it's there and they can take it home if they don't have internet that's uh, reliable or readily available. As far as internet goes, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, I know that there are conversations underway to take a deeper look at that. Um, I think that there have, I'm not sure which programs, but I think there may be, there may have been some grant programs that, federal grant programs that kind of touch in on that or federal programs that touch in on internet access. Um, but that is something that I think I think the university will be looking at a little bit more closely, but we don't have, um, you know, post pandemic quite the solution to that, that we, that we did during the pandemic. We don't have a long-term solution for that is what I'd say. The volume of online during the pandemic and right now certainly presents barriers to students in, in a number of ways. 
Um, the university has done a good job, I think, of looking at technology and security and, and trying. It, it's such a big place, and so it's hard to get to everybody, but I think making a real effort to work through a number of different organizations um, to figure out what students need technology, what students need Wi-Fi, what students need a laptop, and make sure they have that available to them. We've offered an MBA here at Ohio State since 1933, and I've got like 10,000 alumni. And in the program right now, my program has grown from like 400 students a year and a half ago to we're pushing towards 600 students now. And part of that growth was offering it online because anywhere in the world you can join our program. That changes, you know, we talk about supply and demand, that changes the demand for online technology. And so I need to change the supply side as well. Online classes have been really helpful in some respects, but really difficult in others. Um, something like over the summer, I really look forward to there being an online opportunity for classes simply because I don't live uh, in Columbus. It's very hard for me to get that content and I'm very happy that I'm able to do online sessions over the summer where I don't have to worry about transfer credits or anything like that. I can do it from home and that makes my life easy, especially with GEs. It's sort of cool that students can take a mix or if they need to be at home for some reason, you know, maybe a family member needs their help, they have options to take all sorts of online classes and still fulfill what they need to do. Um, so the more that we can offer different types of classes like general education laboratories as an option for online, um, hopefully that will help students fulfill the needs that they have and still get d relevant experience to science, you know, at things actual scientists do. I also focus in on digital skills and um, helping to bring skills to students that are really important um, for career advancement, for career readiness in today's world um, based on market trends and industry connections. Um, so we, my team manages a portfolio of micro-credentials that are offered um, currently to the public um, who are on, online non-credit learners. And um, we also have some offerings for internal audiences of students as well.